Hi there, thank you so much for joining me on this video. I appreciate your company very, very much. I'm going to talk about airflow today. Why and when is it so important for our orchids? Not just because you might be growing outside for most of the year as I do, but when it comes to indoor growing or even greenhouse conditions, airflow becomes even more important because of the factors I'm gonna address right now and greenhouse or indoor conditions, we're trying to replicate what nature does naturally. Being more of an outdoor grower for eight, nine months of the year, I have it pretty lucky that I can take advantage of what nature does for me with regards to wind. I do moan a lot about having hot, dry winds. I would prefer a little bit more humidity in my climate. So I do moan a lot because it becomes quite the workload if I don't have the humidity, I do have a lot of airflow, but then I have to keep up with the watering. So my setup helps me with that, with the LECA and self-watering, because at least every pot has a little bit of a microclimate that keeps a little bit more humidity around the orchid than I normally would have if I were to grow in organic media. I would be going nuts with a collection of 300 and plus orchids, trying to keep up with watering. But as you can see, it's a breezy day today, so it might affect the mic. I apologize for that in advance. But if we're gonna talk about airflow, we might as well hear it in the audio as well. First of all, airflow is extremely important to keep the orchids cool. You can see that I have no curtain there to protect from the direct sun now coming into my blooming alley. It is later in the year, the sun is lowering in the sky and it is coming straight into the blooming alley. And even though I have trellising there, that means nothing because you can see that some leaves are pretty, pretty exposed. So I'm gonna go back there and touch my CG Roebling leaf that is extremely exposed to the elements because by touch, I can tell if the leaf is heating up too much and if I need to do something about it, like lowering the curtain. It's warm but it's not hot. And that is a good thing, that is fine. And that is what the airflow is doing for me today. The leaves are directly being hit by the sun. And if there was no airflow today, I would be in trouble if I didn't put the curtain down. There's a leaf here of a Guatemalensis, I hope all this is in the viewfinder, that has been in the sun for the past three hours. And it's cool because of the airflow. So first of all, airflow is extremely important to cool down the leaves of the orchids. If you don't have airflow even in your greenhouse or indoors and your orchids are behind glass, they will burn, especially behind glass because it's like a magnifying glass. When you get the sun into a certain angle or the magnifying glass, you can actually create a small fire with dried shrubs or twigs. And the same thing would happen behind glass with an orchid that doesn't have enough airflow. The light is great, but the heat of the leaf will heat up and literally cook the tissue. So one of the reasons airflow is so important to our orchids is to keep them cool. Another thing you can also do, like I would do, I can lower a curtain and have all this protected from direct sun. But seeing as I have plenty of airflow today, I'm just gonna let it go, but I am monitoring the leaves that I see that are exposed. And yes, there is always a margin of error and miscalculation, but for the most part, if you have enough airflow, your leaves will not heat up. And that is why they can take a little bit more light than they normally would be able to. Let me show you my fire sleeve. You see how exposed that is there to the sunlight? This corner is protected. That's why my fires is here. I'm trying to cultivate pretty leaves, but that direct sun right there could be a problem. Just touch the leaf and see if it's warm. It is warm, which is concerning because the fires leaf texture is a bit different to a cattleya texture, for example. Um, this could be at risk. So the thinner the leaves are, the more cautious we have to be with how much direct sun can it take because you see how far in the corner it is there. A little bit more protected, less airflow, that could become an issue. Am I going to move it at this point in time? No, because I wouldn't know where to put it. So unfortunately, if I were to do anything about that now, I would have to bring my curtain down to provide it with some shade. 
Now imagine it is pouring with rain, absolutely pouring with rain. If the temperatures were a little bit cooler, then airflow is fundamental to get all the orchids to dry out before the cooler night temperatures kick in. And especially when it comes to the crown and all the little crevices and leaf joints so that the orchid doesn't increment any rot. Pathogens and bacteria are very, very happy to have a very wet and humid environment. So let's just say you live in a climate where it is very, very humid and you get a lot of rainfall. Your pathogens, your fungi, your bacteria, they're all having a field trip because they absolutely love that kind of climate. And to avoid them getting hold of your orchids as regards to rot and water pooling in the leaf joints in the crowns, the airflow is what's gonna help them dry out. Especially orchids that could be considered prone to rot and stem rots, like for example, and gracoids. But they love a high humidity environment. But you will very, very rarely find them out in nature where they naturalize in an area that doesn't have high airflow. So yes, right now I'm not going to be watering the crown of my angracoid because I don't want to risk it, but I can water around the stem, keep the high humidity environment going, but based on the breeze today, I don't risk anything. If it wasn't a breezy day, I would be focusing just on the pot. The airflow helps me to be a little bit more radical and drastic and get away with it. I can do this with my summer blooming Phalaenopsis as well, I would not have any risk of crown rot at all. And if it were to rain today, same thing. My summer phalaenopsis would be outside getting rained on. With a lot of airflow, watering is a breeze. Pardon the pun. This is the Stanhopia, it lives out here constantly and I can just pour water straight into the ball and root of the orchid would be absolutely no problem. I've got new growths coming as well and if it were to rain the water would pool in there. It wouldn't be an issue. I wouldn't be worried one bit. Same with my little Tolumnia here. Very very dry day. I'm just going to pour water into the pocket because this orchid likes a high humidity and I don't have high humidity in my climate. So the pocket is now soaking wet, providing a nice little microclimate around it, and airflow will dry that out with plenty of time. So the risk of pathogens is high when you apply a lot of water, if you are in a very high humid environment and your orchids do not have airflow. As long as there's airflow, there will be no rot on any new growth, and definitely there won't be any crown rot. If for example, you're growing indoors and you have no choice but to grow indoors, greenhouse, and you're watering heavily and everything drips onto the crown, into the nooks and crannies of the orchid, into the leaf joints, it is paramount to have airflow to make sure, like out in nature, that the airflow will dry out whatever is pooling in the leaf joints. So for indoor growing, it is paramount to have good airflow be it by fans, be it by vents opening of the greenhouse, be it by opening a window. That is why winter is such a delicate time for us that have to bring our orchids indoors. Or when we do grow indoors, the temperature drops, everything changes, unless you're lucky with a setup that can maintain a great airflow all year round, no matter the temperatures, and you've got heaters going, etc. Even with heaters and lights, you still need airflow because once again, those heaters and the lights will heat up the leaves, which can cause dryness around the leaf edges and it can also cause burning. Airflow is super important. I consider it one of my biggest, biggest struggles in my climate, but it is one of my biggest helpers as well because I can be this radical and this orchid is going to dry out pretty quickly. Airflow is also super important for orchids that are on a mount, especially when they're in bloom. Now, mount, bloom, water, sun. Not a good combination because it can ruin the look of the blooms based on the water. The water droplets will create the same effect of a little magnifying glass and burn the bloom's tissue. It can happen 
on any bloom at any given time, but some blooms are a little bit more delicate than others. Not all react this way. So it's a question of knowing the orchid and knowing what the blooms can handle. My Dendrobium sorala blooms right there, they are delicate whether I put water on them or not. The orchid needs water. The health of the orchid is, comes first. I believe I have enough airflow today that I can get away with what I'm doing without destroying the tissue of the blooms. So when it comes to protecting an orchid from water, especially when it is in bloom, always consider how much airflow you have, how radical can you be with your watering, especially when it's on a mount. Will the blooms be affected or will the airflow dry that out and not affect the tissue? My little Serratolabium here, Sharky, has no problems with water on the blooms at all including the fact that this orchid is loaded with happy sap right at the column and it's still not burning in the sun, direct sun now, because of all the airflow. This is my little Tulumnia breezeway right now. They are normally on the west side of my blooming alley, but I have a much better chance of watering them here where there's a lot, a lot of breeze and I can really get them to strength one final time before I have to be super careful in the winter because right after watering it's important for me that these guys especially these little orchids with their little bases dry out this is important they need the water they will dry out very very quickly as you can see I'm being quite aggressive with their apexes because I've got plenty of airflow today this gives me an opportunity to flush these little tolumnias and get rid of any kind of little excess salts that might be still sticking to the media, which is just plain lava rock. But as they are most of them in spike, I need to make sure that they're not going to draw energy from the fans, but they get enough water. And this would be my third run today because it's been such a breezy day. So especially after a watering like this, airflow, super important. And one other factor where it's important is when you're treating for pests. This is my Dendrobium tortile. It has a little bit of an affinity to attract mealybugs, especially in the crown of the new growth. So when I am spraying with alcohol, this is garlic alcohol, I can spray right into the crown. So for pest treatment, I always wait for a day that it's like this. Whether I see pests or not, I will go in with the alcohol just in case there's somebody in there lurking, waiting to mature and produce more of their own kind. Airflow. My alcohol is going to dry super fast and I don't have to worry about risking any kinds of growth. Meanwhile, they have already finished growing, but the leaves are tender, they are young, and mealybugs tend to like these leaves at this stage. This includes cattleyas, any kind of pest treatment I do, I do it when I have airflow, and thanks to airflow, I can do it without any risk. So whether you're growing indoors or outdoors, it doesn't really matter. Airflow is fundamental, it is paramount, it is important. That is how the orchids grow in the wild, whether they're hybrids, whether they're complex hybrids, whether they're commercially grown, whatever. Orchids need a lot of airflow for the reasons I have just mentioned, especially in very, very high humidity setups, climates. It's because of the airflow that the orchids in nature don't encounter rot. What we're trying to do in our collections is replicate nature as best as possible to be able to grow these beauties pretty much contained in an environment that they would normally not be too happy with. So finding the balance, being able to measure which tasks we can do while we've got a lot of airflow going indoor or outdoor, climate, temperature, humidity. It doesn't really matter how many of these factors are included and are optimal. If you don't have airflow, a problem will come in, no matter how hard you try. And in my opinion, the first thing is bacteria, pathogens like mold, fungi causing rot. On a day like this, I find it very, very easy to take care of my orchids because I don't have to be careful with anything regarding crowns, with guarding leaf apex and I can really, really flush them out, especially the mounts. I can really use a lot of water because I know no problems. Days like these in fall for me are a blessing because when it comes to winter, that is when the watering gets a little bit more targeted, a little bit more controlled because the colder temperatures will not permit my orchids to dry out 
especially the tolumnias that we just saw. Same with up here. Little tolumnia I'm enjoying in my blooming alley. Little basket, it is soaking wet, but it is going to be dry within an hour. And that is all because of airflow. I hope you found this interesting in case you are wondering why greenhouses were always so loud with all these fans going. Yep, those are the reasons. And if you know any more reasons, feel free to share them in the comments below. I'll be happy to know why airflow is important apart from what I've just mentioned. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much for watching. By the way, this is Katlia Dinar Blue Heaven. And to the right is Chunye Good Life number one. Down here is Eliciara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Pepper, cinnamon, plastic. Those are the fragrances. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.